Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the sexiest chowder fries ever. Bitches, stand by. Who doesn't love clam chowder? Put your hand up right now. And since I don't see any hands, everybody loves clam chowder. And when you marry it with delicious, freshly homemade fries, lordy lordy, it's a dream come true. And not that difficult, actually. Goes together quite easily. You excited, Max? Hell yeah. Do you think our New England people are, are all screaming at the screen right now? No, oh, they might be when I make it, but... Chowder! <laughs> Chowda, chowda. Chancey, are you excited? I'm psyched. Let's get going and we begin with bacon that I already have cooking in the pot. Quite certain you didn't need to see me cut up bacon and then cook it. So I've done it in advance. But what we're gonna do is we'll now take it out. We'll let the grease drain off as much as we can. And we'll put it here on paper towels. The bacon pieces themselves will not figure prominently until the end. The bacon grease, though, on the other hand, will become important because with the little that's left, we're gonna cook some celery and diced yellow onion. This is gonna take about five minutes to soften, and while it does, we'll, uh, we'll cut some potatoes, Chancy, all right? Sounds good. Because a chowda needs some potato. All right, we need to peel and dice up some potatoes. I like to start by cutting off the end and then just doing this. Quick peel. Of course, if you don't have a peeler, a little paring knife will do, but a peeler is a pretty, pretty useful little tool for your kitchen. If only you sold a paring knife. Shut up. What if I did? Would you buy one? Yeah, I would. You would? Of course I would. Then I will get a paring knife. Just for you, biatch. That was a cryptic conversation. I wonder what we're alluding to. <laughs> All right, once they're peeled, now, we, uh, now we're gonna cut them up. So. Look, this is not an exact science. I want to end up with cubes of potato about this size, right? Think about how somebody will eat the food, right? Piece of this in their mouth, fine. Piece of this in their mouth, that's not gonna work. So you gotta make this stuff at a size that works. But as I am fond of saying, the important part is just that they're the same thickness because that means they will cook at the same time. And that's what we want. So just continue cutting up into cubes like this. I feel like I'm forgetting something. You must be forgetting something. I don't know why I'm... And when the potatoes are peeled and cut and diced, we're almost ready to put them into the pot. But one quick thing first. Okay, so to amp up the flavor a little bit before potatoes go in, we're gonna throw in a little splash of vermouth. And by little, I mean little, because that's literally all I had left. But that's okay, it's gonna do wondrous things to this, including making that smell right there. Really fantastic. So just let it simmer away for a second or two. And now we'll add the potatoes we've just lovingly cut. And now the important part. We're gonna use the juice from three small cans, six and a half ounce cans of chopped clams. Yes, we're using the clams later, don't worry. And one eight ounce bottle of clam juice. We want this to cover. We give it a little stir and we wait for it to come to a boil. And when it does, we turn it down a bit. We add some fresh thyme, give it a little mix. We move on. And now fries. And just like for the potatoes in the chowder, we need a peeled potato. I've done that, but I like to start these guys flat just makes it easier so now we're cutting planks of potatoes again same thing the even thickness is important and when we've got them where we want them like this we're going to turn them into french fries whatever size you want is the size you make and once they're cut, we take them and we're going to put them in a bowl of water to do two things. Get the extra starch off and keep them from browning while we cut the others. Just continue till you're done. We peel, we plank, we cut, they go in the water and repeat. Once 
are all done. Take them out, get rid of as much water as you can. And then we're gonna dry them on paper towels because as we all know, oil and water do not mix. And dropping a big ass handful of these in while they're soaking wet is only gonna bring misery on you and your hands. So dry them off well. Then they can go in the fryer basket with the others once they're done. And when they're all in, in the oil they go. At 350. We're gonna fry these twice to get them extra crispy so they don't uh, sog out under the weight and moisture and deliciousness of the chowder. So we'll give them uh, four or five minutes at 350, then they'll come out, we'll let them rest a bit, then they'll go back down again at 375 to finish off. But in the interim, they're looking beautiful. Just definitely make sure they don't sog out. You know what I mean, sog out. Everybody knows what that means. <laughs> But now we can get our chowder finished off. Sorry, now we can get our chowder finished off. Now's when the fun starts. Remember the clam juice we used? We didn't use the chopped clams. Those will go in. We'll put in about a cup of whipping cream. Gorgeous. Now a little seasoning, a little salt, a little black pepper, love that. And a little Old Bay seasoning for the win, and we mix. We leave this on the simmer for about uh, 10, 15 minutes until it thickens, and we're almost there. And because I'm stupid and don't remember everything, I forgot I bought a can of smoked clams to add to see if this would do something delicious. Oh my God, how is this not gonna be the best thing ever? I don't know if I want all this oil here, so let's just get the clams themselves. Oh. This now, ladies and gentlemen, has taken a turn for the delicious better. Not that it wasn't gonna be good, because it always was, but this smoked clams being added to this regular chowda, we may have created something here that will live on in infamy. Infamy is a good thing, right? Yes. Well, actually, I don't know. Well, we're going for the good version of infamy. And so while we're leaving the oil behind, I think I might like a little drizzled on my bowl when I have some. Now we'll mix, finally. Okay, this is gonna be genius. But our fries have had their first fry session and need to come up. They look like nothing, right? There's a little crisp on the outside, just a little, and you can hear them. Well, I can hear them. So now we're gonna turn our fryer up to 375. And when it gets there, these guys will go back down. In they go. At 375 for our final frying to get them golden, beautiful, and crispy. And our fries, ladies and gentlemen, are ready, crispy, and gorgeous. But they need to be seasoned. Even though they're getting clam chowder on top of them, they must be seasoned. So let them rest for a second and then I'll show you what we do. Listen to this. It's like rocks tumbling, but it's not, it's fries. And here's what they get. You ready? Ready. They get some salt, not too much because we're also adding more Old Bay seasoning, which definitely has salt in it. Oh, the smell. These are gonna be ridic. Short for ridiculous. And now a little pepper, you ready for that? And we mix. Wow. And you gotta eat one with gardeners, right? You hear that? Oh my God. Crispy on the outside. A beautifully light and fluffy on the inside. The old, mm. But let's make this, come on. The gardeners are coming, quick, quick. In go the fries. I suppose we should probably present them a little better and make ourselves like a little airy in the middle, right? Part of my hands in front of the shot. Just want this to be beautiful. I'm, I'm styling the bowl now. You okay with this? Yes. And now, the star. Oh. 
this gorgeous, rich, thick, amazing chowder. And the dark pieces in here are the smoked clams. So we only have a few things to do to it now. Ready? It's like I need a little more broth or something in here. Yeah, beautiful. There we go. Now we're ready. And the gardeners are coming, so now we're ready. Get a little more pepper, because we can. We give it a touch more Old Bay, because we want to. We give it a little hot sauce. You know I'm a fan of Cholula. Just a few of these. Two more things. Remember our bacon, friends? Yep, just like that. And now, it's a teeniest little bit of parsley and boom! Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the sexiest chowder fries ever! I, um, I don't, I'm at a loss. I mean, I'm just looking and everything is, oh, rich and creamy and delicious. Let's not forget we made our own hand cut Double fried fries, time for a bite. Let me tell you something. The two things that we added last minute, the vermouth and the smoked clams made a tremendous difference. A tremendous difference. Now, of course, the crispy bacon Oh my God, the time, the... But here's what you really want to do. Come in here with a fry and get some of that. Oh my God. Do you know how good that's gonna be? Do you? There's the magic right there. Crispy fry, creamy, chowder with all the deliciousness. Are you kidding me? Are you? I'm not. Max used to say that when he was like 14 to like 16. Like every third sentence. Are you kidding me? With all that enthusiasm. Damn it. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry you can't be here for this. But if you dig this, then subscribe to the channel. Because this is what we do. Often. Make crazy delicious stuff. And hit the notification bell. And the little thumbs up like thing. We like the likes.